Hello, hello, hello. I'm also recording on two cameras and we're going live inside of the AJ Society group and I'm recording on my camera here. So I'm gonna go back and forth to you guys. But today I'm, yes, going to be answering DMs. DMs with Danny. I get a lot of DMs. So sometimes I just am like, that's a great question. So I'm just going to answer this person's question on the show. So sip of the good stuff. Here we go person will remain anonymous because they didn't ask for permission for um, me to answer this question. So after listening to a few client stories and speaking to my consultant, I'm having a few doubts if it really is HA that I have. My consultant said because I had a small withdrawal bleed after taking progesterone, it wouldn't be HA. And my progesterone at day 21 was normal, low, but normal. And listening to the podcast, the women have had eating disorders or competitive runners or working out for two to three hours a day. I just can't relate to that. Can you recommend any episodes with women who have a similar story to mine? So there's so much here and I'm going to go through it in order. Okay. I don't know what a consultant is, but if it's a healthcare practitioner that's telling you, you probably don't have HA when you are missing a period, um, but they're also not coming up with any other explanation. Here's just what I need you to know. If you are missing a period, if you do not have your period, you have had a period in the past and you don't have a period now, the high, high probability is that you have hypothalamic amenorrhea and that is the reason it's missing. There are some other less common reasons, but in a nutshell, if you don't have a period, you have amenorrhea. That's just how it works. Like if you don't have a period, you have amenorrhea. So there's that. Now this consultant said, because I had a small withdrawal bleed after taking progesterone, it wouldn't be HA. So many people get recommended to take progesterone. It's also called Provera for um, some places, just different brand names. And it's a test. Taking progesterone pills when you have HA is typically a test to see if you will bleed. It doesn't fix anything. Um, and it also doesn't necessarily tell you what's wrong. It can give you an idea of a starting place of where you might want to look. So maybe you pass the test, which means you do get some kind of a bleed. And this means that your estrogen levels have been pretty good. Like they're there, they're, they're sort of existing. And this is why when you get blood work, you might have low or normal, low normal ranges. There's some hormonal activity. You have enough rest or enough energy, enough fuel in your body for some hormonal activity. And so you're developing some semblance of a uterine lining. So if you take progesterone pills, that will cause the lining to shed. And now this information is helpful for us just to know kind of in a way how deep you are into HA. So I find it interesting to know if you pass or fail, like it's information to help me know, uh, do you have some kind of hormonal activity happening or not? But it's not a diagnosing tool for whether or not you have HA. So the fact that you pass or fail doesn't mean you do or don't have it, you know? It may just mean you're not like flatlining your hormones, but you still don't have enough to get a period and that matters. Okay. And my progesterone at day 21 was normal, low, but normal. Low to normal ranges in blood work is typical for someone with HA. And listening to the podcast, the women have had an eating disorder or they're competitive runners or working out for two to three hours a day. I just can't relate to that. So that is a common experience, but I also do have many shows with women who that's not the case. They didn't always, they weren't competitive runners. I actually don't have that many competitive runners on the show, but I do know that it's very prominent in that community. In general, if you are very, very busy with stuff, with life, if you are an active person, if you are under eating or you think you're not, but like even maybe you are, you know, even if you're not sure, if you have a very stressed lifestyle, there are so many other factors besides having an eating disorder, being a competitive runner or working out two to three hours a day that can cause you to get amenorrhea. Like that can, bit, that can lead up to you being too stressed to get your period back. So now you have amenorrhea. So I just 
I really liked this question because I think so many of us get put into doubt about this diagnosis, if you will, by other people and our practitioners because we don't relate to having any kind of problematic behavior in our life. But the truth is, if you live in this society, these first world countries, Australia, New Zealand, England, anywhere in the UK, anywhere in Europe, honestly, um, the United States, these first world countries, you are a part of a society that is not conducive to women getting a break. So that's my answer to that. And I mean it all with love. I can see how people want this to not be the thing. And so, oh, it's not HA, it's probably not HA. So, so going down this path of like changing my life and my behavior and my relationship with food isn't the key. Like I have a lot of compassion for that. I fully understand where you're coming from. And I can tell you from experience that if you let yourself get stuck, honestly, in this story, it's gotta be anything but this, you're doing yourself a disservice. The level of stress that we're operating at on a day-to-day -day basis that we have deemed normal, that is the problem. And that is something worth looking at. Hey, that was fun.